G'day. Do you have trouble understanding hyperbole and asymptotes? If you do, then this series of videos will help. In this first video, I'm going to explain what an asymptote is and how it behaves thinking in terms of fractions. In subsequent videos, I'll talk about how to find asymptotes in different locations and how to have multiple asymptotes and so on. But first of all, let's look at what an asymptote is. It all has to do with fractions. So imagine that we have some function that looks like a fraction, where instead of changing the value on the top, we're actually changing the value on the bottom. So this remains 1 all the time, and as x changes its value, we have this. This will be quite enough. Just go about four steps each way. Good. When we're substituting, and this is probably the best way to start learning about uh, hyperbole and asymptotes, if I substitute x equals 1, I get 1 over 1, which is worth 1. Well, that's nice and basic. We'll learn more about this particular point and this location later. If I substitute x equals 2, I get 1 over 2, which is a half. So instantly we see that fractions start to play a very important part with these functions. When I put in x equals 3, I get 1 over 3, which is 1 third. I'm trying to estimate here if, that's, if this is 1. So a third will be about here. And if I substitute 4, I get 1 over 4, which is 1 quarter. Well, so far we can observe two things. One is uh, that this is decreasing in value. I think you'll see that when it gets to 5, we're going to have 1 fifth, and so forth. That's a funny expression. But still, I hope you also see that we're getting something like a curve. If this line here between these two points continued at the same gradient, it would continue down here well into the negative numbers. But we should realise as we go out here, if we got out as far as, say, 8, we would only have a fraction of 1 over 8. If we went out as far as 100, 1 over 100. So the, the fractions shrink in value quite steadily. If you go out to a million, you would have a fraction of 1 over 1 million, which of course you really couldn't draw on a graph, but it still is a positive fraction. Question, is there anywhere out there that it will actually become zero and touch the x-axis? Well, I think you can answer that for yourself. For any finite number, you could have a number with 16 billion uh, digits in it. One over a 16 billion digit number is still a positive fraction. Now, it's incredibly small, but it's still positive. So the answer is no. As far out as this goes, it will always have a positive value. It never actually touches the axis, but it does get very, very, very close. In fact, it can be as close as we wish. And this is what we call an asymptote. The, the line here, the axis would be the asymptote. So I'll label it. And you can see that the graph of the function gets closer and closer to it. If we came back this way, we find a different problem. And this is where we need to understand fractions quite well. If I substitute a half, and I want to find the y value, I actually get this. I get y is equal to 1 divided by a half. Now we need to think of this in terms of this. 1 divided by a half. And I hope you can remember, you should, know how to divide by a fraction. And that is we multiply by the reciprocal. And 1 times 2 over 1 is just 2. So in fact the value we get at this point is plus 2. In a similar way, when we substitute a value of 1 third, we get 1 divided by 1 third, 
and following this same procedure we get a value of 3. When we put in a quarter we get a value of 4, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh. If we put in a value of one millionth we would get a y value of plus one million. And here we, we face a similar kind of problem we faced out here. We can get as close as we like to the y-axis and it'll always have a positive value, but there, we, it is impossible for us to actually substitute zero. I think you can realise that one divided by zero is quite undefined. But you can have as small a fraction here as you like and the y value will be correspondingly large. So this function, the graph here, will continue up here forever getting closer to the y-axis. So it turns out that the y-axis is also an asymptote of this function. Now we're not quite finished. We've substituted positive values, but what happens if we substitute negative values? Well, if I substitute negative 1, I get 1 divided by negative 1, which is just, it's a positive 1 divided by a negative, and you should know that when you divide a positive by a negative, you get a negative answer, and 1 over 1 is 1. So when x is minus 1, the y value would be minus 1. So suddenly we've got one part of the graph here and we've got another part that is quite separate from it, yet part of the same graph. If I put in minus 2, by the same logic, I would get an answer of negative a half. Minus 3, negative a third, minus 4, negative a quarter. And you can see that as far as we go out here, this graph will get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis in the same way that it did out here on the positive side of the x-axis. And if we look at the fractions here, the same principle applies here. If I divided 1 by negative a half, I'd be dividing by negative a half, which means multiplying by negative 2 and getting negative 2. So all that happens is we introduce a minus sign into all of these calculations. So at minus a half we go down to minus 2, at minus a third down to minus 3, and minus a quarter down to minus four, and so forth. And you can see that this graph will continue asymptotically, that's the term we use, down the y-axis. Well, that's what an asymptote is. It's a line on a graph where the curve gets closer and closer and closer to it as you move further and further up the line towards infinity but never actually touches, but always getting closer. And asymptotes typically occur when we have fractions. So far, so good. I want to explain to you, however, another way of understanding asymptotes. And it involves this. I, I won't stop and erase this, so I'll just block this out. We're not going to talk about that anymore. We're going to talk about this particular equation here. And I want us to multiply both sides of this equation by x. So if I multiply this by x, I get xy. And if I multiply this by x, I get 1. And this equation means the same as that. Now, we can understand this in a different way. As you can see, it doesn't look like we're dealing with fractions, whereas here it's quite obvious. What this says is I want two numbers that multiply to give me plus 1. Well, 1 times 1 is obvious, isn't it? But just think about it. 2 times a half, 2 halves make 1. 3 thirds make 1. 4 quarters make 1. 5 times a fifth makes 1. And so forth. Half times 2, or a half of a third of 3, or a quarter of 4. Or even minus 1 times minus 1 gives plus 1. It's a different way of thinking of the combinations. And it's this thinking that I want to introduce in the next video as well. In this particular video, I just want you to understand that some functions produce asymptotes. 
and the most common one you'll deal with in school is one that looks like a fraction or when it's rearranged looks like this with a product of numbers giving some number like one or two or three enough said that's all I want to introduce, introduce in this video about asymptotes. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.